Welcome to Training Tuesday for November 30th, 2021. I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, and I have already done a previous video about choosing a target if you're going to target train your snake or other animal. So this video is going to show you some of the targets that I have here that I've tried, that I've experimented with, that I've used. But mostly I wanna show you how to take a target disc because my colleague Danielle Anise is now making these target discs and what we haven't figured out yet is how we want to provide handles or sticks for these target discs and so right now she has a very small amount available that are just the disc that aren't on sticks yet so I'm going to show you how I go ahead and put those on some type of a target stick. And I'm also gonna tell you why it's beneficial to sometimes have two of the same target. One that is not on a stick and one that is on a stick. But first I wanna just show you all of the different options for targets. The first thing that you need to know when choosing a target is what colors your specific animal can perceive. So the snakes I work with are a lot of pythons, boas, and colubrids and the latest research shows that or indicates that they can see colors in the blue green color spectrum so the wave lengths of light that the color opsins in their eyes can perceive seem to be blues and greens so colors like these and it's debatable i'm not sure i mean i just don't know whether they can see yellow or not i have tried yellow targets with some of the snakes. In fact, I tried this exact yellow target with our false water cobra and false water cobras see very well. She didn't really seem to respond to it the way she did the blue target. So she really responded saliently to this blue target and she just sort of looked at this yellow target like I don't, it's something's there but I don't really see it. Um, some of the snakes seem to respond fairly well to green. I use green for a lot of the corn snakes, but they also respond to blue just fine. And I don't know how well snakes can perceive shades of color. So how well they can distinguish between this color blue, for example, and this color blue, and this color blue, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know some of these things. I can tell you that the snakes I work with perceive blue and green. I don't know how they perceive the different shades. I also don't know how well they perceive detail. Can they perceive that this is a square and this is a circle? I'm not sure. Or can they tell that this is a triangle target and this is a circle target? Some of these things I might test out and experiment with and see if I can determine that. Or like this target has a number on it, the number five, and that's for my use and Danielle's use so that when we're discussing the different targets I'm testing, then I have a way to tell her, oh, well, I like number one for this reason or I like number five for this reason. But what if I were to take a large target, like say this one, and I would put a big X on it or a big circle on it. Would a snake be able to perceive that or a big number five? I don't know. They don't have fovea in their eye structure and fovea are what allow us to see fine detail. And I know that their eyes just structurally do not contain that part, but we know that they see motion very well and they can see contrast. So even though a snake is gonna perceive colors other than blues and greens as just different shades of gray. They can contrast this. They can see that the, this is blue and this is a different color. So they can recognize contrast. So let's get into how I put some of these targets together. Now, if you're using round targets like these lollipop targets, I don't put these on sticks myself. I buy these that way and I usually buy a separate ball that's identical to the one that's on the target so that if I want to do a foraging exercise I can still put the target ball near the food in the foraging exercise or if I'm working with a really shy snake and I want to pair the target with food for a shy snake I can put the ball in there next to the food until they're used to it and then I can start showing it to them on a stick and I, I just buy these I, I'm not sure how to affix these I do know how to attach the flat targets to sticks and I've done that 
in a few different ways. So this one that I'm testing out is just taped. I've just taken a metal rod and I used duct tape and I just taped it on here because I wasn't sure if I wanted this to be permanent or not. It's the only disc like this I have. It's one of Danielle's that I'm testing and I wanted it to be temporary. So I just put duct tape on the back and that's how I've been testing it out. But this one, which is the target that I use more than any other target, I have several that I can put in foraging exercises or I can start new snakes with pairing the target with food without me present. And then I have some that I've attached to target sticks. And when I knew that I was gonna use this target a lot, I semi-permanently attached it to the stick using a zip tie and drilling a hole through the bottom. So this particular target has a lip in it that um, this rod would fit through and I was able to drill a hole and put the rod through the lip and then I zip tied the top of it so that it's very secure. But what if you have a target that's completely flat, something like this that you want to attach? Well, I just drill a couple of holes in it and I zip tie it the way that, you, that I've done with this one. That's one option. You can always use tape. I suppose that you could use some type of glue. Silicone, I've not had success siliconing plastic or rubber targets to sticks. The silicone just doesn't hold. And if you use a silicone target, like this is a um, pet food lid that's made out of silicone, I can't find anything to stick to this. And so I, I duct taped it to something else. And I'm actually in this video going to show you how I am going to more permanently attach this particular disc to a stick because I use this for one of my inland carpet pythons and I use this for my Escalapian snake, this particular color green. They do learn their own colors. So for instance, the two inland carpet pythons Morelia spilota macaffei that I have cohabitated. One of them responds to this blue target and one of them responds to this lime green target and they know their target disc. So if I show this one to the one that's been trained with the blue disc, he just kind of looks at it like what? and vice versa. They literally will follow their own target. So once you've repetitively used a target with a snake and trained them to recognize a particular one, they will associate with that. And if you decide to change the target, which I have done, several of my corn snakes were trained with this lollipop target, this green lollipop target, and I decided that I wanted to change them to this green disc target which my friend Danielle made and I zip tied to a retractable stick that I took a fly swatter off of. I bought a retractable fly swatter and I took the fly swatter part off and I attached the disc to the stick. So in order to switch them over, I initially showed them their old target with this one right behind it. training sessions and then I eventually took this one away and paired the this target with food and now they're responding really well to this one so you can teach them a new target you just have to kind of start the process over a little bit I already mentioned that some animals don't just see green and blue and it's very important for you to know what colors the species of animal you're working with can perceive Red, for example, is something that some lizards and crocodilians can perceive, and turtles. Turtles, really, turtles, tortoises, testudines, really, really, really respond well to red. Red targets work really well for them. So please research the animal you're working with. Dogs see blues and greens. Horses see blues and greens, maybe yellow. Birds and fish can see a lot of different colors. Insects can see a lot of different colors. I don't know every color that every animal can see. And so if someone comes to me and says, I want you to coach me in training my snuffleupagus, I don't know. Name an animal, insert animal species here. I go and I research that animal species and I ask the person who is working with that animal species to also research the species and determine exactly how they see, 
how well they see, how they perceive the world visually, and what colors they can perceive. Maybe we don't even use a visual target if you're working with a species that has very poor eyesight or if you're working with an animal that just happens to be blind, then you wanna use something else in your training as a cue or a target. So you can use things um, like touch or tactile sensations to cue behaviors. You can use sense, um, you can use lights, you can use vibrations, you can use sound. So you need to know how your individual animal perceives the world and you need to know what colors they can see and how well they can see detail, how well they can see shades, if that information is available. For some species, it's just not available, but you have to do your research and try to find out. As I was setting these aside to clear my workspace, I found this one and thought I'd show this to you too. This is an actual fly swatter that I took one of these silicone dog food lids and I just zip tied it to the fly swatter. And the reason, not zip tie, I twisty tied it. And the reason I used twisty ties instead of a zip tie is I wanted this to be less permanent. I thought that I might take this off and I wanted it to be pretty easy to get off. Then I could reuse the twisty ties to put this on a different target stick if I wanted, but you could use zip ties just the same. What I don't like about this fly swatter, and I have used this with a more experienced learner, but if the snake strikes at the target and misses the disc, they can get their teeth caught in the, the mesh of the fly swatter. So that's why, for instance, this disc, I took the fly swatter part completely off and I just attached the disc to the stick because you really want to make sure that there's nothing that your animal, whether it's a snake or other animal, can get their teeth caught on if they get over excited, if they have a prepotent response to seeing the target and they bite it or strike at it, because sometimes dogs will do that when you're target training a dog. They get impulsive and really excited and it's called a prepotent response that it's become so automatic that they look at the target and have this emotional response that they associate it with reinforcement that they just go for it. Dogs sometimes will bite the target and it's a phase they go through until they learn some impulse control. And snakes will do the same thing and sometimes strike at the target because they get excited. And until they learn impulse control, you don't want them to accidentally attach their teeth and get their teeth caught on something and have a bad experience with the target and then they don't want to target. You also want to make sure that whatever you're using equipment wise isn't something that can hurt the animal. You don't want them to get hurt by it either because you want this to be a positive experience and not something that's aversive to them because you want them to continue to engage in the training. So I just use a drill bit that looks like it's about the right size for a twisty tie to fit through. And then you're gonna have to estimate about where in the target you wanna make the stick and usually it's gonna be right in the center. I'm looking at the target and I want the stick to pretty much go right through the center of it. And with a target like this, it's got ridges on one side, you've got to decide which side you're gonna put your stick on. I want the snake on the side that's flat, so there's absolutely no chance that they can get their teeth caught in these grooves on this lid. And then if you're using like a plastic target like this, yeah, I still think you would want the flattest side closest to the animal because you don't want them to have anything they can get teeth caught on or easily wrap their mouth around. So I think the flatter edge should be on the side where the animal is gonna come at the target. And the lip, if there is one, should be near. So these dog food lid targets have this little tab here. I guess so you can pull it off the can easier or hang these up. I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna put my stick through it and then it's bendable, it's flexible because these are silicone. I am going to bend it up, I think like this, and zip tie the stick to this side. I've got this fixed about where I want it on here and I am just now going to make a little dot on either side of it so that I know about where to drill the holes for my zip ties to fit through. When you drill holes through something that's this flat, I can't use the table or I'm gonna drill right into the table. So I like to use an empty cardboard box or one of these wired dog crates that 
my drill can go through this and then go through the dog crate and not create a hole in anything. I'll show you what I mean. But theoretically, the drill can go right through this and through the opening in the dog crate and I don't have to worry about it drilling into my table or anything. zip ties on. Now I'm going to obviously have to cut the excess off. And now I've got my target. Hopefully this will work well and the next time I train my inland carpet python, Castiana, or my Escalapian snake. This is the stick that I took it off of. And so now I am left with a Kali stick or an Eskrima stick or a self-defense weapon if I need one. So very cool, I'm not gonna throw this away. I might need it. Or I could actually just attach another target to it and use it as an animal training target stick. But you know, it's always good to have self-defense weapons around the house. I always do. Rogu saw me messing with targets and he's, he's up here at the top of his enclosure looking like he wanted to train. So I'm going to offer him something to eat, and I'm going to show you an example. This has been the target I've been using with him, is this kind of light sky blue one. First I paired just the food with this, then I put it on this fly swatter, but Danielle made me this one, and it is almost exactly the same color. And so I'm going to start switching him over from this one to this one. We're going to see how that works out right now. And it looks like it worked out just fine. And he's eating in his water. King snake, California king snake, eating underwater. There you go. He actually spends a lot of time in his water and does some swimming, which is why I've given him such a large water container. joining me this week for another Training Tuesday. If there is anything that you would like me to include in a Training Tuesday, whether it is in regard to training one of your animals or training you as to how to do something, please let me know in the comments or you can always email me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com or reach me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or just right here on YouTube. Thanks and I will see you next time. And Rodney, what do we always tell people? Until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.
Thank you.